are listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS podcast students. In this episode, we are talking with Pan. He is studying at the University of Manitoba, and he's going to give us a full insight into what life is like there, how we got in there, and um. Yeah, and what life is like at the university. So welcome to today's uh, podcast, Pan. How are we doing? Hi, I'm not doing good. Thank uh, you, you. Super, super. I'm doing all right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so Pan, could you tell us just a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you're studying? Yeah, hi. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Ben, for giving me this chance to talk about with you for your podcast. As you said, I uh, could just call me Pan. I'm from China. I came to Canada uh, 2022 to start a Master of Business Administra- Administration program in Asper of the University of Manitoba. Interesting. Okay. And why did you choose the University of Manitoba? Uh, I have to say rather than University of, of Manitoba, I chose the Asper of Business School. Yes, it's a part of University of Manitoba as well. But uh, I think a million because of the good ranking and the reputation brand value of this as per school of business. And also it has a good design of the structure of MBA, which I'm studying right now. Rather than a general MBA, we can have some concentrations on like uh, marketing, uh, supply chain management, leadership, finance, and something else. So, I'd like to uh, come here to have a study with them, to see the different possibilities of my future career or plan. That's all. Interesting. Right. And Manitoba is it's quite remote, isn't it? I was looking at the map beforehand. So what's it like living in Manitoba? I imagine it's amazing. You know, lots of nature, lots of wildlife. Uh, yes. Quite wild. First of <laughs> all, you have to how to say you have to come come have a fight with the cold weather in the winter. If you can survive the winter, I uh, have to tell you the summer is the best summer ever had. So far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will be, you feel like everything is deserved about the scenery, the how to say. The landscape of here is quite unique. You will see the prairie, the flying Canada goose, the deer. <laughs> if you are lucky, sometimes you can also see polar bear. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Have you seen a polar bear yet? Yeah, yeah, at zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I'll take that answer. <laughs> Good uh-huh. stuff. All right. So, um, what's your typical day like at uh while you're on campus at the University of Manitoba. Okay, so just like I'm a full time student, but it's business school, so I'm I'm working at the same time. I work for a property management company as a, a bit administration. So most of the time, my typical day will start in the afternoon on campus after two. We will go to uh, Asper School of Business. We have a student lunch for graduate students. So some other colleagues, even the professor, we will meet there to talk about the recent lab, class, study, and the plan of the afternoon study, sometimes even the night class. Mm -hmm. That will start the day uh, because it's graduate program so the class is quite long minimum three hour per session and wow. uh, yeah so you need some energy to start it so most of the time we would choose to go to the student lounge to eat some snack bars drink some coffee something like that interesting so just to confirm what you said so you're working in the morning with yes. 
a property management company and then in the afternoons you go to study and you uh, and also like interact with your colleagues the professors yeah. and everything yeah. Yes. Interesting, right? It, yeah, because it's graduate program and it's business school, so majority of the students we are all working in well. It's more like a co-op internship. Just you need to practice whatever you learned from the class. Fantastic! Did mm-hmm. you get the job in the property management company before you went to Canada, or when you arrived in Canada? Uh, after I arrived in Canada. Right. And mm-hmm. did Manitoba, did the university help you get that job? Uh, not this current one. But Sorry, was, say that not, again. Not, uh, not this current job. I got this current job by myself. But I would like to say the University of Manitoba has a very good like uh, career development center which help you to build your future career. But not my current job. I got it by myself. Right. When okay. so you said you started in 2022 when you arrived. Is it yeah. look, is that property management job your first job you've had uh, in Canada? No. Uh no. Uh I got I got my undergraduate ed- education in China. Uh graduate I first graduated in 2012. I got my first master of business administration in New Zealand. That is 2016. So I've been working in the supply chain and the logistic industry for like 10 years before I came to Canada. I see. I see. Okay. So you left New Zealand. You got a master's from New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, you worked there and then you came to Canada. And what was your first job in Canada? Uh, it's the current job. This, oh, uh, I see. Management one. Because I just arrived uh, July of tw- uh, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And will you stay in Canada once your course is finished? Uh, yeah, I'd like to if I got this chance. But first, I have to graduate successfully. And yeah. This is uh, two years program so hopefully i can get a three-year uh works work visa to allow me to work and stay here Mm -hmm. interesting okay then and just going back to the university are you satisfied with the university's facilities and resources uh yeah generally speaking i like this university the resources about education uh, the program related, we even have the business entrepreneur school. We have some lab to offer the uh, cutting edge technology in financing, accounting area, even supply chain and logistic. So mm-hmm. far, so good. The only thing that I'm, which I'm not happy is the parking because they charge a lot. <laughs> you not and happy you- with the what? Sorry. Sorry? Oh, the parking. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> seems like uh, we are in uh, the campus is in Fort Gary. It's far from the downtown. In this area, it's quite open. I just feel like it's not reasonable to charge this half price <laughs> for student parking. That's the only thing I'm not satisfied. Okay, it's okay. All good. That's not too bad then. That's not too bad. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do hear the. I do wish the management of University of Manitoba would hear this podcast and do some. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll send it to them, but we'll wait till you've graduated first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right then. So you mentioned before that you uh you finish your work and then you go up to your campus and you said you will. Um, start your study in and you'll interact with the the professors the staff and your work colleagues uh, is that right in like in the yes. afternoon yeah I see yes. okay um so you would say you've probably got a good working well how is the relationship between you and the the staff and the professors and your colleagues mm, I would like to so rather than call it Colleagues, professor, you mean from the university, right? Yes, yes. But more like good friends, and another way because it's business school. So 
Sometimes it's the professor is the professor, but some of the professor may even younger than the students. And uh, so we may more like good friends and this professor, he or she is more good at this particular area, like financing, mm -hmm. accounting, uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. So we just exchange or share the experience from our previous life and learn from each other, something like that. Interesting. How would you say the education is different in Canada to, say, China? What's the main difference for you? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of differences. I'm not going to talk about the political part. That's about the education system. I of feel like uh, the, the part in Canada is more creative and encouraging. I think it's because of the culture difference. In China, we might would like to like just take, absorb whatever the professor or uh, lecturer told us without them the challenge, uh, debate, negotiate. And uh, in Canada, the classroom environment is more like is more energetic. You're supposed to make a contribute, give your own opinions, even challenge whatever your professor thought. I think it's more productive, I have to say. Interesting. Do you challenge the tutors and the professors a lot? Uh, it depends. If I'm very familiar, I had an experience in this particular area of mine, if he says something wrong, I mean, would like to correct him, something like that. And uh, mm. do you correct the teachers a lot? Not a lot. No. Because <laughs> I'm a student. Yeah, a teacher, huh? yeah, it must be good. <laughs> Let me in some particular area, guys. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, okay, that sounds right. So, um, tell me, like, do you do you get involved in any clubs, organizations, or extracurricular activities? Do you have time for those? Because uh, it's um, because I'm working in this graduate program, I didn't involve lots of activities, but I do have to do some uh, volunteering jobs for the university, like an academic learning center, or the highways to make a contribute to the community. That's, I'd like to say I do some volunteering the organization jobs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And have you made uh, some friends on campus? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, from the volunteering, we met some uh, new international students from all over the world. Yeah, we, be, we became friends after that. And would you say that's kind of extended your your business network as well? You think it'll be mm, advantageous? Yeah, the business network, I have to say, meaning from the business school. Yeah, you will become friends with all your classmates <laughs> after the class because it's not only about the class. You will also work together to do a program, like a pro girl project. Sometimes it even has a commission from a company. We need to do a proposal. Also, we have like a monthly gala. We would like to gather in you know, a fancy hotel, a bar, have a drink to celebrate the how to say the milestone of this business school, what we have achieved, something like that. Interesting. So you have a lot of chance to social to expand your social network, something like that. That would be good for your future career, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That yeah. makes sense. That's yeah. interesting. Now, um, is it how are you finding it balancing your job, your study, and your social life? Is it a challenge or is it quite easy? That's, that's quite a challenge, I guess, for everyone. Yeah, definitely. Less business school called like a less uh, pro graduate programs that is quite intense and challenging. So, how does it relevant? Uh, saying how to balance it, I would like to say since I'm a full-time student right now, I need to have a priority. 
So now the priority of my current life is starting to complete this master degree of business tradition. Yes, I have to do my job work and the social, but uh, you just need to have a very good schedule, give you all most of the time uh, energy dedicate to the study part and uh, try to finish your work as good as possible and the social life, uh, guys, just be yourself, everything will come. <laughs> All right, interesting. Uh -huh. uh, and like you said that you're you're working in the in this property management company and you said that sometimes you get commissions and work from like going through the university from external companies. Is that yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's mainly like come from the marketing program, it's like marketing innovation, digital marketing. Some company, especially like a new, new founded company, would like to approach us to, uh, to get a, a business proposal for their new product launching, a marketing plan, something like that. Interesting. So it's quite practical then. The course is quite hands-on and, and realistic. Yeah. yeah, and you have some benefits come back from it. <laughs> and I don't say, not most of the time, but uh -huh. uh, sometimes it's good. But it's that part at, uh, because it's just like a, a minimum pay. I like so the experience, the social network you got from this uh, program is more valuable. Right, I see. So the payment's more like of a token gesture. Yeah. yeah. But but you do actually gain like industry contacts, industry interaction, industry yeah. experience as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And your colleagues, your work, uh the colleagues that you your study colleagues, mm -hmm. um, where are they from? Are they Canadians? Are they also international students? Uh, half, half, I would say. We have around uh, 40 to 50% local Canadians. Mm. Uh, but most of them, they are working full-time and studying part-time. So uh -huh. I will meet them most of the time. I'll meet them from the night or weekend class. And another half, the international students, because of it's business school, so majority of them, They'll come, either come from India or China or some oh. Asian country. We also have a few uh, other international students from all around the school, yes. You have a all few from where? Right? Oh, okay, from around yeah. the world, but the majority, China, India, you yeah. say. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, what is it? There's quite a lot of them, two nationalities in the world. <laughs> it makes makes yeah, complete yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I like the fact as well that it seems quite balanced between the locals and the the international students uh, as yeah. well. So, excellent. So, just uh, two questions. Like, how do you feel the university is preparing you for your future career goals? Uh, preparing my future career goals. Uh, since I'm working right now, but... Uh, if I put myself into a role like just a student, I think the in university did well to how to to build my ability of working to teach me the necessary knowledge in this area of business industry to prepare me for the future challenge. I'd like to say from the course design, it's not only about academic stuff, it's quite realistic. Like uh, from the supply chain logistic course, we have a we have real opportunity to have a look to the uh, cutting edge software like ERP system to do the procurement uh, inventory management, something like that. Also, mm. I don't know the university, but the business school, we have a CDC department. It's called the Career Development Center. Yeah. It, and it offer co-op program, so all the company would like to uh employ the student 
from the university or from business school, they will approach. Uh, most of the time is the CDC approach them. They're going to have this program to offer an internship, especially for the new graduates to right. gain uh, experience in this industry. It's quite important for international students, I guess, because we came to here without any social networks, without any resources. So the university helped us a lot to prepare for the future career, how to say. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. So just to summarize that last question, the, that last yes. answer, the CDC is quite proactive in finding companies, organizing internships and yeah. building what an international student new in a country might be missing because they're new in the country. The yeah. CDC of Manitoba has quite a proactive approach there to, to get the international student up and running and integrated into the business world. Yes, yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes. Also, meanwhile, the government of Manitoba has a, a STEM, a STEP program as they offer a lot of job opportunities to university students, especially the minorities uh, and the international students. It's more like a program or contract uh, working term. Fantastic. Some of oh. my colleagues, they are working for government under this contract. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just one last question before we wrap this up, Pam. Um, yes. Would you like to mention anything before we finish this interview? Oh, yeah, what well, I'd like to mention, <laughs> because uh, it's my, one of my friends from the university, he's also a faculty, recommend me to uh, this house podcast. Am I supposed to share anything about the English study? <laughs> 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 But I have prepared, but I'm totally okay so far with this. You know. Okay. Uh, no, you're uh, you're doing you're doing fantastic, Pam. Okay. Um, in the past, yeah, I've asked a student, an international student like yourself, representing a university about the IELTS exam, and they said, "Oh, I didn't take the IELTS, so I just sidestep that question." No, because it's okay. quite embarrassing. No problem. But I do I took the IELTS in order to apply this. Yeah, you position. did take the IELTS. What scores did you get? Uh, I got seven in general. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh -huh. Well done, man. Well done. Okay. One last question. This is the last question. How yeah. did you prepare for this exam? Uh, prepare. I think practice is the most important part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Because uh -huh. I, I took this exam in China. We have a feel like a training school, a uh, uh, practice academic center. as just like what your organization is doing. It's quite helpful. Yeah. It can, Mm, as a Chinese English speaker, uh, like uh, we can, it's really, it's really easy to get a high score for uh, listening and the reading part because of our previous starting learning yeah. uh, experience. But the most difficult part for Chinese students are speaking and the writing because the way we are thinking, speaking and the writing is quite opposite from the English word. So it's sure. quite important to have a professor uh, or professional staff to help you to practice, to guide you into a correct direction, especially for the essay writing, uh, how to say. Yeah, totally mm -hmm. agree with you there. Totally agree. That's so solid, mm -hmm. solid advice. And yeah, I, I also agree with what you said, like with my Chinese students, listening mm -hmm. and reading, they excel. And usually they're in contact with me to help them improve their writing or their, yeah. their speaking. That's the, the standard situation. And also from experience, I could, I totally agree with you. It's, and I, at first I was curious, I was like, why do they always need help with just writing and speaking? And then digging deeper, I realized it's because the education system is quite different from the, the Western or from other yeah. education yeah. systems. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. totally agree with you there, Pan. Okay, well, massive thank you for joining us today. And I just want to say to anybody who's considering studying in Canada, hopefully you've got a great insight and a great insight into 
maybe studying at the University of Manitoba, studying an MBA there like Pam has. And if you need more information, then you can come to IELTSpodcast.com and we've got all the links on this to uh, on this episode where you can find out more information. So massive thank you for listening and good luck with your IELTS preparation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Thank you, Pan. Okay. Um, see you. IELTSpodcast.com